Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll explain you monostable multi vibrator using operational amplifier. This video is quite interesting. Here I'll explain you a few very interesting fundamentals based on monostable multi vibrator. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first I'll be discussing about basics of monostable multi vibrator. After that, I'll explain you circuit of monostable multi vibrator using operational amplifier and with this circuit i'll be deriving output equation and based on output equation i'll explain you working and waveforms of monostable multi vibrator so at last you will get to know how exactly monostable multi vibrator functions so let us begin this video with first agenda that is basics of monostable multi vibrator monostable multi vibrator means what Monostable means one state is stable. Monostable means one state is stable. There are always two states. Like in digital, we have 0 and 1. Likewise, in analog, we have plus V and minus V. So here, monostable multi vibrator that is having one state stable and second state is quasi stable state. What is the meaning of stable state? Stable state means that state will not change. To change that state, you need to give external trigger. Like if I say stable state is plus V voltage, then to change output from plus V to minus V, we need to give trigger. In quasi stable state, state will change automatically. If I say quasi stable state is minus V voltage, then output from minus V to plus V happens automatically. That will happen based on circuit, right? So here with monostable, we have two states. One is stable state and second is quasi stable state. Stable state will change by external trigger and quasi stable state that changes automatically. Let me explain you how. You see, if I say this is monostable multi vibrator block diagram and here we are giving triggering, then how output will come? See by blue color, we are having stable state and by green color we have quasi stable state. So if I say this plus V voltage that is stable state then to change this state we need to give trigger. If I say here I am giving negative going pulse as a trigger then plus V to minus V voltage that will be happening by trigger. So to change stable state we need to give trigger. Now you see this is quasi stable state that is minus V. So from minus V to plus V voltage is happening automatically for this we don't give any trigger over here right. So monostable multi vibrator that is having one stable state and second quasi stable state to change stable state from plus V voltage to minus V voltage we need to give trigger and from minus V to plus V we don't need to give any trigger automatically that state changes. Now how it will change let us try to understand that by one circuit. So here, if you observe, we have monostable multi vibrator circuit in which here we have output and we are using this op amp in differential configuration. So here at inverting terminal, V1 voltage is given and at non-inverting terminal, V2 voltage is given, right? Now to understand output equation, first of all, let us consider we don't give any trigger. So if you don't give any trigger, what will happen? output will be having plus V voltage, right? Means you will be having stable state. So what will be my output? So see my output that will be, see if I say differential gain of this op amp that is AD, then that will be AD into, you see here voltage at non-inverting terminal that is V2. So AD into V2 minus V1 where V1 is voltage at this inverting terminal. Now, let us try to understand how we will be having plus V voltage. I am saying that here we will be having plus V voltage. But how it will be plus V? Let us try to understand that. See here, what is V2? Let us try to understand that. See V2 that is the voltage happening over here at this terminal, right? And this V out that is happening over here. Here I am saying V out is plus V, right? So as if it is plus V, then V2 will be, you see this plus V voltage into R1 divided by R1 plus R2, right? 
so here v2 will be plus v into this resistance r1 divided by addition of both resistance as per voltage divider rule right now here we are considering we are having plus v voltage at output right so this output that is going in feedback over here that is positive voltage so as if positive voltage comes in feedback over here at this terminal you see we have diode and capacitance so this diode that is appearing with plus voltage over here i am not saying it is exactly plus v it is somewhat positive voltage if it is having anode positive over here then this diode will come in forward bias so here across diode voltage will be vd and that will be 0.7 voltage if this diode is made up of silicon right so here see as if it is having plus v output then this diode will come in forward bias so voltage at this terminal that is v1 that will be vd voltage right so i'm saying here v1 is minus vd why it is minus vd the reason is here we have diode here we have diode in forward bias right now i'll explain you v out voltage as if we give trigger so here in trigger we will be giving negative going pulse so here in trigger i'll be going to apply negative going pulse so that is my trigger over here so let us say this trigger voltage is minus vt so what will be my output over here see with trigger my output will be quasi stable state what has to be my output now my output that will be happening as per same equation ad into v2 minus v1 and let us assume that is minus v right now i'll explain you why it is minus v but right now consider it is minus v you see why it is minus v it is minus v the reason is now at v2 we are giving trigger so output that will be happening as per trigger so trigger voltage is minus t vt right so my output that will be having v2 that is now minus vt so now at positive terminal we are giving negative voltage that's why my output will be negative now this negative voltage which is minus v which is happening over here that will come in feedback now as this minus v voltage that is coming in feedback so now we are having minus voltage right now we are having minus voltage if it is minus then this diode that will be off you can say it will come in reverse bias so here this voltage that will be happening as per voltage across capacitor right so voltage v1 now that will be happening as per voltage across capacitor if i say voltage across capacitor that is vc then vc will be my v1 now so this v1 that will be vc voltage right so minus vc that i am writing over here and one should know here this vc is happening because of diode is there in reverse bias right so here output will be minus v right but you need to understand first quasi stable state that will change is automatically and this stable state that will be staying as it is it will be staying plus v only to change this we need to give negative going pulse over here now i'm going to explain you how it will happen by waveform so in waveform first of all i'll be considering a case where we don't have any trigger so here if you don't have any trigger means you are applying zero voltage over here at trigger so at that time what will happen if you have zero voltage over here at trigger at that time we will be having stable state at that time v out has to be plus v right so at that time v out that has to be plus v voltage so you see v out that will be plus v voltage now at that time what is v1 see v1 that is a voltage over here so this v1 that will be vd voltage only why the reason is diode is there in forward bias so this v1 will be vd right so here this v1 that will be vd voltage the reason is diode is there in forward bias right and it will be 0.7 volt in case of diode is of silicon right now i'll explain you second scenario the reason is this stable state that cannot change automatically 
for that we need to give trigger so in second situation i'll be giving negative going pulse over here so you see now i'm giving negative going pulse over here and with this negative going pulse with this negative going pulse we will be changing state we will be changing state right so here if you apply negative trigger then output should be minus v so if you apply negative trigger your output that will change now it will become minus v over here right it will become minus v over here at the time what will be my v1 my v1 at the time my v1 that will be this capacitor voltage why the reason is now diode will be off so this capacitor voltage that will be v1 now you see here we have minus v voltage now this minus v voltage that will be charging this capacitor here now we have minus v voltage at this terminal that will be charging this capacitor right that will be charging this capacitor so this capacitance that cannot get charged immediately the reason is this capacitance that is getting charged via this resistance rf so it will take some time to have charging so here let me draw waveform of v1 this v1 waveform now that will be happening as per vc it will be happening as per vc and it is getting charged by rfc time constant so you see now this vc that is getting charged and it is getting charged negatively why it is getting charged negatively the reason is here we have minus v voltage over here right so it will be getting charged negatively now see what will happen here we have minus v voltage and v1 that is now getting negative as it is getting charge so it cannot exceed beyond v2 so if v1 is exceeding v2 then what will happen negative negative that is getting positive so positive value that is exceeding v2 value means your output that will changes automatically to plus v right so if this value of vc if this value of vc if it is exceeding v2 in that case this v out that will be going to change automatically now here there is automatic change in state there is automatic change in state why this change is happening auto change is happening because now vc is exceeding v2 right now question is what is the value of v2 see here we have minus v voltage right that minus v will appear over here now v2 that is happening as per voltage divider rule only the reason is you see after this much time after this much time we don't apply any trigger trigger will be small pulse only right so after this much time now v2 v2 is happening as per v out only and v out is minus v so v2 that will be happening as per v out that is minus v so v2 will be minus v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 right beyond v2 that is v into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 in that case now automatic change in transition will happen and here immediately here immediately now this capacitor voltage that will be going to be vd only right why it will be going to vd only the reason is now diode will come in forward bias the reason is you see as if stable state is there as if positive v voltage is there diode will come in forward bias so immediately this capacitor that is getting discharged over here and at v1 output will be vd right so immediately here v1 will be vd right so this auto change in transition that is happening because of charging of capacitor so charging of capacitor that is happening via this resistance rf right and based on that based on that we have this much time to have a change in transition so this quasi state this quasi state that is purely depending on rf and c time constant right so if you increase rf c time constant time period of quasi state that will be longer one over here right so one can control quasi stable state based on rf and c value and here see v out 
that will be having plus V to minus V transition based on negative going pulse. That is how complete monostable multivibrator is functioning. Now I hope you are having proper idea about how exactly monostable multivibrator functions over here. Still if anything that you would like to share, please note it down in comment section. I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.